All right, good morning, afternoon, evening, and or night. I'm Daniel. And I'm Ryan. Is that a Dr. Pepper? Heck yeah, it is. Very nice. All right, welcome to the Small Town Table Talk podcast. I've been waiting so long to drink that Dr. Pepper. Well, I'm glad you finally got it. I'm glad as well. Anyways. Anyways. Ah, how's it going? It's going pretty good. Uh, I don't know if you knew this. I'm hoping you do since I've been talking about it every episode so far, but I got moved into my new place. Mm Mm-hmm. I am aware. It's a pretty nice place. Uh, My roommates are pretty loud, but all things considered, it's not bad. Sorry I wasn't there to help move in, but, you know, sounds like Uh, it went okay. Yeah, it's just because you're a fake friend. Yeah, a fake friend, of course. You know it. Obviously. I'm sorry, I got caught in the act. Ah, shucks. It's cool. You're just double uninvited for my birthday party now. <sighs> We're talking about this again? Didn't we have this conversation on, like, the first episode or something like that? I'm pretty sure it was episode two. Episode two? I don't know. It's been so yeah. many that I just, you know, they all blend together at this point. We've done, I know, like, right? It's How many? Like, a hundred and something? I think we're at 132. Ah, 132. So this is 133 or this is 132? No, this is 133 right now. Ah, makes sense. Makes sense. It's it's wild how many we've gotten out in four weeks. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, have we ever stopped recording? No, it's just a nonstop 24-7 kind of situation. I'm really glad that we were able to get Isaiah in for an hour of it. Yeah, that was pretty fun. Yeah. I think that turned out to be a good episode. That was pretty funny. I think so, too. Yeah, I moved into a new place. Bravo. Yay. Yeah, thank you, thank you. I uh, spent my first... Let's see, today's today's Friday. Moved in on Tuesday, so... Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and today, I spent a few hours painting every day, and I just finished this morning. And, oh boy, it looks so much nicer now. Uh, the guy that owned the place... Well, still owns the place, but... He had kids living with him, because, you know, he had kids... And the room I'm in, it was like a bright sky blue and it had a mural of an air traffic control tower, which it was a very nice mural. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm not eight, so it wasn't quite my taste. I got everything repainted a nice, nice light gray and a navy blue color. It's, it's starting to feel like home. But see, what you could have done is change the air traffic control tower into like a cool lighthouse and painted like a cool mural, like the ocean and then the lighthouse, and then, like, a boat off in a distance with, like, the sun setting. So you see, like, the horizon, you know? And then the sun's, like, half set with a little, like, boat in the center with, like, a dolphin jumping over it. You know, I could have done that, but that would have been so much more work. But it would have looked cool. Yeah, if I was going to do a mural, it would probably be something more like the Avengers Tower or maybe up in a corner do the Death Star. How about both? I could do both and have the laser from the Death Star kind of like going towards the Avengers Tower. Just have a huge mashup of all the different movies and fandoms and stuff. Oh yeah, do you watch, have you ever watched uh, Have you ever watched Jazza on YouTube? Yes, yes, I have. Yeah, you know he's got that big mural of different mm-hmm. characters behind him. Yeah, I could have done something like that, but you know I am not that artistic and also money. Yeah, money's always the issue. It's a great motivator, even though I'm getting ready to drop like two hundred fifty on another lightsaber. Of course you are. Of I have one already, but I'm... Don't you already have another have... one on the way, too? No, I canceled the order on my second one because that place that I ordered from is kind of going way downhill in terms of quality. So my first one and my second one, I'm going to get them mounted above my bed to have like a sort of like a crossed X shape. Mm-hmm. It's going to be really cool. Uh, so wait, Trust is me. this the second one that's going to have sound? This one is going to have sound. I'm actually going to okay. order it with two additional sound fonts in addition to the uh, the one that comes with it for free. Mm-hmm. So it'll sound like it's technically three different lightsabers, even though it's only one. Wow. Really Yeah, very cool. cool. Yeah, I can get it ordered in black, blue, red, or rose gold. The blade color? No, no, the, the handle. I was going to say a rose gold blade. How does... How would that work? I mean, maybe if you had, like, a tinted plastic i suppose but no that it's not that advanced actually uh this company has i think their standard allows you to have switch it between one of 12 12 or 16 colors it's nice that's pretty cool oh heck yeah i'll get my lightsaber eventually someday i'll help you pick it out a red one you know 
shoes. I'd be a Sith. Well, or, you know, you could order from the company I'm ordering from and just have a wide variety of colors. Yeah, but, you know, I'm not going to spend that much money right now. I got other things I got to spend money on. Like? School. Take out a loan. But then I have to pay those back eventually anyways. Coward. Eh, maybe. Maybe I'm a coward. Maybe I'm just smarter with my money than you are. I'm going to disagree with you on that one. That's probably accurate. That's probably... Yeah. That's probably fine. Speaking of school, though, how, how'd your... Was this your third week? This was our third week. Yeah, this was my third week, except it was my third full week. And this is your second full week, because your first week was only like half, right? Yeah. To still technically so, week three, though. I guess, but I'm just uh, I'm just cooler than you, I guess. I guess. I had a total of one in-person class this week. Wow. I had no classes to either attend or watch yesterday or today. Very cool. Um, and I'm, there was only like two video, three video lectures that I had to attend or watch, I guess. Everything nice. else was like asynchronous, so I could do it my, at my leisure. I'm a little bit jealous. Yeah, you should be. I spent a lot of time just sitting here doing nothing, living the life, you know. Uh, yeah, my classes on Monday were all in person. We were doing a, uh, a lab in one of my classes that had to do with compressed air and different, uh, me- me- different mechanisms that you would use in a system like that. And um, when I was taking my system apart, I kind of forgot to shut the air pressure off, and one of the hoses started flying everywhere. So I covered it up. <laughs> I, I just started spraying around like a like a hose, like a water hose. Yeah, and instead of turning the air pressure off, I or decided, I oh, air hose. let me just cover the air hose with my hand. Um, not a good idea because that tore up a decent amount of skin. <laughs> Not my not my proudest moment. Didn't think that one through, did you? Definitely didn't. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Because, like, a couple weeks ago, my Wi-Fi wasn't working on my laptop. So I was forced to play um, games that I didn't need Wi-Fi for. So I decided to bust that game out because I never beat it. And I've gotten re-addicted to that game. So I've been playing a lot of that. That's good. Yeah, it's fun. I'm having a lot of fun playing it. I also... Uh, started playing the Avengers. How's that? Um, I only got through like that first tutorial section so far. Was it A Day? Yeah, the whole A Day situation. You know. I don't think that's a spoiler because they showed that at the very yeah, beginning. Yeah, that, that's they what that's what it. all that trial gameplay was that they released. I recorded all that. I'm hoping to get that edited either tonight or tomorrow or sometime this weekend to go up next week, and then I'll continue playing and. It seems it seems fun so far. So out of that like a little tutorial kind of thing, um, which character do you think is going to be your main? I like Thor. You were you saying that Thor is just like slow or clunky to use, but I, I was kind of digging it. I mean, to each his own, I suppose. I just I really didn't like it. Yeah, like Hulk was you know just jump around and punch. Iron Man was hard to use in my opinion. Really. Just See, like the like whole Iron flying Man. and aiming situation. I guess I had my sensitivity much higher than normal, probably. I had it on high sensitivity. Yeah, so that might have something to do with it. So, like, flying and aiming at the same time got really difficult. Right. Um, I definitely think that Captain America is my favorite in the game so far. Captain America is fine. I didn't have anything against him. I don't know. I just think I enjoyed playing Thor a little bit more. He felt like he, he was a little bit more powerful. Yeah, he's got some cool abilities, but... Yeah. I don't know. I haven't gotten far enough to really have an opinion yet. Yeah, you don't get to play as some characters as much as others in the campaign. I think you play as Kamala Khan the most. Yeah. Kamala I, Khan. I figured. Kamala? Kamala? Is there, is, is there really that big of a difference Kamala in the pronunciation? Khan? Kamala Khan? Yeah. I Something like so. that. It doesn't matter. It's, it's a close enough pronunciation. And... Uh, I went into it knowing that there was, like, different character designs, and I saw, like, the trial gameplay and all that, and I wasn't totally sold on either the voice actors or the new character designs, but after playing it, I'm not that opposed anymore. They're not terrible. I'll agree with the um, character actors, the the voices. Captain America's definitely doesn't fit, I think, 
but that's just me. Yeah, they're all a little a little different, but I really do like Captain America's suit at the beginning of the game. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It looks a little bit more like a riot armor almost. I think that's what they were going for, something that seems which, a little which bit more makes, realistic. It makes sense. It's a little bit more realistic. It's a little bit more armored. Because I don't think that there's really body armor that sleek that is comparable to what uh, he had in the Avengers movies. But then again, I don't look that much into body armor, so I couldn't tell you for Neither sure. Neither do I. But um, just going through that opening little gameplay thing with Kamala at the A-Day game thing or whatever... Convention? celebration you know yeah the convention um and just getting to like meet the each character a little bit yeah that was um, that was really cool it was cool like it was funny like thor's interaction just how thor sounded it sounded like how thor would talk i thought it was really neat being able to see them as people i guess i mm-hmm. don't know or like it it was cool seeing them from like a like a a, a bystander perspective like the Marvel right. movies, they're centered on the characters, so th- that's the perspective that you see. But like seeing it from like a young fan's perspective, like meeting them, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I think it would be really cool to see a Disney Plus series kind of like that. Yeah, where you, where it just like focuses on just a, a a random person in the in the Marvel universe, just interacting with characters. Yeah, basically. Or just interacting with the Marvel world. I think it'd be kind of cool to see a uh, sort of office kind of show with like the a, Avengers. Like a little sitcom. Yeah, showing all of them how they get along in Avengers Tower or at the facility, wherever it might be. Mm-hmm. I, I doubt that'll ever happen. Kind of like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but without all the action. It's just like S.H.I.E.L.D. agents doing like office work. Right. I'm going to take your word on that, though, because I have never watched more than like six episodes of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I haven't watched any of it. Okay, so I'm actually a little better than you. Yeah, call me a fake fan. Haven't watched the TV shows. Sorry yeah, about it. You're a fake fan and a fake friend. Wow. Wow, double wow. But you know, the, this is the way I look at it. So the MCU movies are the primary continuity, of course. Of course, All yeah. the TV shows are just secondary. Like, the movies affect them, but the shows don't really affect the movies at all. Right. So... I know enough by just by watching the movies because I'm watching the primary continuity source. Watching the secondary source doesn't really change anything. You know, I think I read somewhere that Disney is going to be getting or Disney, Marvel, whatever. Someone is getting the rights for Luke Cage and Iron Fist back, so it's possible they'll get a soft reboot in the cinematic universe rather That'd than cool. the Netflix. Do you think they'd keep the same actors? I would hope so. I think that they played the roles pretty well from what I watched. I never finished either of the series, but I did watch yeah. some of them. I watched the first season, I think, of both of those. And I didn't mind it. I I know there was a lot of criticism around Iron Fist with kind of some stale acting. It was not very well received. And stuff, but I, I didn't mind it. Like, yeah, I think the dialogue was a little like, I am the immortal Iron Fist. He said that a lot, didn't he? Yeah, but I mean, is that acting or is that just writing? I think a lot of it had to do with the bad writing, possibly had something to do with directing. If they were to make it in the big leagues with Marvel Studios, it would absolutely be better. And, no and I heard it. that Iron Fist's second season, the acting and dialogue felt much more natural and much more fluid. And I think in Defenders as well, it kind of cleared up and was better received. So I think it just had to do with like writing and finding the flow of the character with both the writers and the actor. And then things kind of started to fit together, but then, you know, got canceled, so. Yeah, well, it is what it is. Yeah, that'd be cool if they could bring back the Defenders to Disney+, Plus or to Marvel, the cinematic universe as a whole, by keeping the characters, or the actors. Yeah, so, what do you call the shows like uh, Falcon, Winter Soldier, or WandaVision? Uh, what do you call those, like, primary continuity or secondary, like the other TV shows? So, I think once those shows come out, they become secondary sources, but then the Netflix and, like, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, like, Agent Carter and stuff become, like, even a lower tier. Whatever the third rank would be. Yeah, so it'd be, like, the Marvel movies are first and foremost, like, anyone can really watch those. Right. And then, like, fans would watch the Disney Plus shows because you 
those are, you know, they take up more time. There's more story to have to pay attention to. And it's a little bit more, not so much big scale story. It's a little bit smaller and intimate. The only reason I might disagree with you on that is because I know for a fact that WandaVision is going to tie directly into Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. And Mm -hmm. also, uh, these TV shows, they're not produced by the TV studio. It's produced by Marvel Studios, and it's just going to stream on Disney+. Plus. Yeah, yeah, I knew all that. I don't mean, like, smaller scale as in, like, they're only going to be, like, fighting smaller bad guys. I just mean, like, smaller scale as in, like... Might not reach as much of a fan base. Yeah, it's not going to be as big of a... It won't be a movie. It's not going to be like Avengers Infinity War or Avengers Endgame where almost the entire world has seen it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be more for like actual Marvel fans. It won't just be for the general public. Or people that have Disney Plus and see it and think it looks interesting. Yeah. Kind of like The Mandalorian. Like Most people have seen some of the movies or at least know of the movies. But then if you go outside of people who like follow Star Wars and stuff like that, people probably don't know what The Mandalorian is or what it's about. Yeah. Season 2 for that's coming out soon. I'm excited for that. I haven't seen Season 1 yet. You should. Star Wars isn't really my thing. Well, Lord of the Rings isn't really my thing. Mm, good point. Although I, I had this idea that if we eventually have your roommate Austin on the podcast, because he's a big Star Wars fan, correct? Yes. We should, hopefully we would do that episode like after a break or something and we can get together and binge the Star Wars movies. And then that could be a point of discussion to discuss with him. Because I've only seen the movies once, so I'd have to refresh my memory. Right, and don't you have Disney Plus? Yeah, but I don't really want to watch them by myself because as I said, I'm not a Star Wars fan. That's fair. So I don't want to go out of my way to watch it. You could watch them with Tori though. I suppose. But is Tori a big Star Wars fan? No. Yeah. But anyways, uh, other Marvel news, it's kind of really big news. Yes, it Kang is the Conqueror. pretty big news. Is he going to be the next Thanos, do you think? So has it been like 100% confirmed that that actor is playing yeah. Kang? Or is it just like... It has been confirmed. So it is confirmed that he's playing Kang and that Kang will, will be the villain in Ant-Man 3. Now, it wasn't confirmed that he's going to be the villain. He's just going to be but he in will be, Ant-Man 3. He, he will be in Ant-Man 3. Which is weird. Or introduced. I think, I think it might be... God, the kind of thing that uh, Thanos had in the first Avengers movie where mm-hmm. he kind of just turns around. But I feel like that would be something that they would want to surprise the fans with. So um, do you know the YouTube channel, The New Rockstars? Uh, yeah, I actually sometimes listen to their podcast, um, Rogue Theory. Yeah, so they just released a video a couple days ago where he broke down that news that Kang was coming in. And then he kind of shared his theories about how it's all going to work. And basically it goes along the lines of like, so Kang is this time traveling multidimensional being almost who lives in that city that was briefly shown in Ant-Man and the Wasp. Right. Do you know, do you know that Easter egg that I'm talking about? Okay. Yeah. I guess that would make sense. So when Hank Pym was shrinking far down in the, in the vehicle thing to, to rescue um, Janet, there's this like scene where like a city and a bubble could be seen right and that is kang's city and the and the way he was explaining it is that when the avengers went through the time vortexes in avengers endgame that disrupted the flow of time and that also disrupted his city which kind of lives outside of time so his like utopia starts collapsing or whatever and that will that will tell him or make him go leave the quantum realm and start interfering with time and stuff like that that would be a really good motivation yeah it would be because like his utopia and his like his city his his realm got disrupted by the avengers and he wants to fix that so he starts doing time traveling conquests eliminating avengers from other timelines and there was a theory that he would go to a, a timeline back in like so in in end in Endgame, when they go back in time, um, Cap and Iron Man to um, Fort Leahy is it Fort Leahy? Uh, something like that. I don't know off the top of my so head. So you, you know the scene I'm talking about where they go back yeah. to that military fort to get the pin particles. Mm-hmm. 
So the theory is because Pym must have made the particles at some point prior to that, those particles are kind of the catalyst eventually for time travel. The theory is that Pym got help from a Reed Richards okay. to make those Pym particles. Um, and the kind of the support for that theory is that um, who's the director for Ant-Man? Peyton Reed? I believe he did said in an interview that he had ideas for a Fantastic Four movie set in like the 60s. I think that he might have actually written a script for that. I know or someone he did. wrote a script or whatever it is, but he had an idea for that. And then that's kind of how this supports this theory that Hank Pym in the 60s made the Pym particles with the help of Reed Richards. And that the Baxter building got sold and bought off by several people and that eventually became Stark Tower and then Avengers Tower. But then Kang, back in present time, after the Avengers disrupt his utopia... He goes through time travel looking for like the source of it or how it all started, which would have been when the Pym Particles were created and the Fantastic Four or Reed Richards. So then Kang would interfere with that somehow. Um, Reed Richards, Susan Storm, Johnny, and uh, what's the thing's real name? Ben something, I think. Ben Grimm. Maybe. Those four get sucked through a time vortex or whatever. So the same way that Janet got her powers by being in the quantum realm, the same thing happens with them. And then they get spit out into the present time. And it's sort of like a... And uh, now they have... Yeah, it's kind of like a weird time travel, but now they have their powers from the quantum realm instead of like the solar radiation standard form. Something about that that might be really cool is if they kind of treat it the way that they didn't treat Captain America when he came out of uh, the ice... And show them adapting into the real world because yeah. I think that could be a really cool aspect of the movie, even if they only they kinda, do it for a few minutes. They kind of played at that in Captain America: The Winter Soldier that that opening scene with him and Falcon, like him taking notes about things. But yeah, it would be cool if they kind of delved a little deeper into that. But that's basically what his theory was: was that like Kane the Conqueror, due to Ant Man and the Avengers inter interfering with the time flow, he will start his conquest, and that's how. The Fantastic Four might get pulled in, and in the Loki Disney Plus series, um, Loki is imprisoned by the um, what's that time agency? I don't know. The let's TVA. just say the VA. Let's just say the Time Police. The Time Police, whatever their organization is, they are basically Marvel's Time Police, and they capture Loki because he disrupted the time by using the Tesseract to get away. You know? Yeah. Um, so Loki starts helping them out trying to solve what's going on with all these different timelines getting corrupted or destroyed or interfered with by Kang. So that's kind of the plot of the Loki thing. It's like almost like a, a police thing where Loki's helping these time cops track down Kang. Now that is some very, very heavy speculation and theorizing. I don't know how much of that's actually going to come through. Probably not. I'm, I'm also kind of paraphrasing what... I kind of remember from the video. I watched it a couple oh, yeah, days it's ago. Oh, yeah, so it's, it's not our job to fresh. come up with theories. No, I mean, it could be. But it could be, but not we're at, not going at to. At this point, it's not. But, yeah, so that's kind of what I summed up from that video. And I think it's kind of cool. I think some of it's more plausible than other. Oh, for sure. I would, I would really like to see the Fantastic Four get introduced that way. But who knows? Yeah, yeah I don't know. I think it's all speculation as of right now. And but it'd be, it could be cool. It could be cool. Yeah. I'm excited to see the X-Men. Yeah, I'm excited to see how they're going to bring in the X-Men. I'm definitely more excited to see the Fantastic Four, just because I personally don't think there's ever been a really fantastic Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, I would I would agree. They're, so the, the X-Men have been done, for better or for worse in some cases. Yeah, I mean, X-Men First Class and uh, Days of Future Past, and those Logan. two were really good movies in my opinion. Logan, Logan was great, Deadpool obviously. Movies. Deadpool. Those were all great, solid movies. Um, the actors played the characters terrific. Even though Hugh Jackman is way too big to play Wolverine. I mean... He's a tall guy. Yeah. But he played it brilliantly. He did play it well. It's just, you know, Wolverine as a character is something like 5'4", 5'6". Yeah, but a little bit of changing ain't ain't gonna hurt nobody it's not that big of a deal right 
But yeah, I would much rather see a Fantastic Four remake or reboot or whatever than the X-Men. At least sooner rather than later. I, w- I would rather see both of them, of course. But at this time, I would rather see Fantastic Four get done first and done right. If John Krasinski doesn't play Mr. Fantastic, I'm going to be very upset. Yes, he has to. And then his wife, Emily Blunt, has to be the invisible woman. Mm-hmm. The Rock as the Thing. See, that'd be cool, but I don't think that would happen. Just because I feel like that's a cast that would have already been at least gathered some publicity just because it's The Rock. Well, I don't think that they've even really done all that much in pre-production as far as I know, but like Fantastic Four. We've, it, Fantastic it's, already, Four. it's already been like said that John Krasinski and Emily Blunt have been in talks with Disney and Marvel about potential roles. So that's already True. been out there. And relatively speaking, The Rock versus John Krasinski is a little bit of a different scale. Love both actors, but The Rock is a little bit of a higher pay grade, you know? Right. Isn't he currently the highest paid actor in Hollywood? I believe so. Highest earning or whatever. Yeah, so... But, I mean, that changes all the time. But, yeah, he's definitely up there. He probably replaced Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. And if Disney can afford Robert Downey Jr., I think they could probably afford The Rock. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's anything that they can't afford him. It's just whether just or not think, they like, see that as a proper, proper role for him to be in. Yeah, because, like, the thing is one of those roles that's, like... Big in the Fantastic Four, not that big in the scale of the Marvel Universe as a whole. And The Rock is an actor who demands presence, you know, and both in physicality and size and just well, talent of acting. The thing is, who's to say that the thing, the Fantastic Four, couldn't become absolutely huge? I mean, look at Iron Man and Hulk and yeah, Thor. Yeah, he, he, he very well could like become a C- show stealer. level superheroes. And after three years of Marvel movies, they were household names. Everyone knew who they were. But at the same time, when those movies first came out, they didn't hire A-tier actors. That's true. Because, like, Robert Downey Jr. was at a rather low point. I think he was at his lowest point. Well, didn't he just make um, um, Sherlock Holmes right before he made Iron Man? Did he? Sherlock Holmes came either immediately after Iron Man or right before or somewhere around, somewhere around the same time. But yeah, like when they were shooting and when he got cast as Iron Man, he was probably at his lowest point. Yep. And now he's absolutely massive. And same thing with like Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans. Well, Chris Hemsworth, I think, wasn't even really known at all. Yeah, even... I don't think they weren't they weren't big actors. They weren't huge movie stars at the time that they were cast. I mean, I don't know of anything that Chris Hemsworth was in before Thor but I have seen a couple of movies that Chris well, like, Evans was even, in before even, Cap. Even look at Spider-Man, who is arguably the biggest name in all of Marvel everything. For sure. They hired Tom Holland, who, to my knowledge, the only movie like he was in beforehand was The Impossible, the movie about that. The um, Tsunami. Tsunami, which came out in like 2000. You watched that in your dad's history class. Uh, his psychology class, I thought. Was it psychology? Behavior. I believe so. It was something. That's weird that he would do both history and psychology. Yeah, it's a little strange field. But, you know, but anyways, they hired, like, smaller actors to play these massive roles, and then it just works. So, like, to hire The Rock and then to put him in a role like The Thing, I don't know. I feel like it could be a brilliant casting or it could be an under-usage of a great actor. I mean, look at Groot. Yeah. What's the guy's name? Vin Diesel. Vin Diesel, yeah. He's, I think he's a pretty well-paid actor. Yeah, he's a pretty big actor. But I mean... They hired him just to say I and am and Groot, specifically in that order. Except for we. We are Groot for Um, the time. I'll be honest, other than the Fast and Furious movies, which I don't watch, and isn't it like uh, that triple X... I don't even know thriller movie or whatever it is outside of those movies i i'm not sure what vin diesel has really been in oh the pacifier the pass i love that movie growing that's what's... a great movie was no it... yeah that was vin diesel i was thinking of uh the tooth that theory. was vin diesel but that was years ago but like outside of those movies i'm not really sure all of what vin diesel has really been in hasn't he 
Actually, wasn't he just like in a vampire movie or something? Maybe. I don't know. But what I'm saying is I don't think outside of the Fast and Furious movies, he does many huge blockbuster movies. Well, what about The Rock? Besides being Black Adam for DC and the Jumanji movies. Moana. He did all the little things. His skyscraper. His, um, uh, not Rage. Was it Rampage? Rampage. There was Rampage. He just did Jungle Cruise. Okay, but how many of those were really blockbuster level movies? I mean, they were Dwayne Johnson blockbuster movies, so they made millions and millions. But that's only because, because it was his name. name. It's not necessarily that it was because it was a big movie. I mean, I suppose. There was Baywatch. There was San Andreas. All right. Yeah, you've proved your point. I guess he's been I'm in just a lot saying, more like, than I realized. He's, he's been in a lot, a lot of quote-unquote blockbuster popcorn movies. They're at least big enough that I know their names. It's A lot of them have just been movies, not necessarily made to be fantastic. But no, they're popcorn movies. They're popcorn movies. Something you sit down and just watch for the sake of watching it. It's not meant to be good. It's meant to be exciting. You sit down with your bowl of popcorn. You eat your popcorn. You watch the movie. Maybe there's some ooh, some ahs, some ha ha ha. But at the end of the day, it's just an entertaining movie. And that's all it is. Yeah, that's you all and, it has to be. You and I went to see Skyscraper. And honestly, I don't remember anything from that movie. I remember very little from that movie. But it was entertaining. Like, I didn't hate it. I think there was something about a glass elevator. Yeah, he had one leg. Yeah, that's that's all I remember. Yeah, that's what the movies are. Which is fine, but whatever. Hey, um, before you know, we get super far into our recording, didn't you want to do some kind of like Marvel thing? Yes, so Daniel, you are a self-proclaimed Marvel Cinematic Universe expert. I would say I'm more than a fan, like a super fan, if you will. So I have this quiz. It is from BuzzFeed. So we know it's legit. Oh, super. Everything from BuzzFeed is 100% totally, absolutely fantastic. The title of this is The Hardest Marvel Trivia Quiz You Will Ever Take in Your Life. Does it say how many questions it is? Uh, It's like a two dozen questions or something like that. Oh, that's not too bad. I read through it, and some of them are hard. Some of them are not. Um, There there is multiple choice for all of them, but I want to just ask you the question. If you can... Say the answer off the top of your head. Great. If not, um, I can read you the multiple choice questions. Sounds good. All right. You ready? I'm ready. And you will be graded on this, and all the other Marvel fans out there that are listening will judge you harshly. Yep. So if you want to actually pause your audio right now, I will post the link in the description. And if you want to try to take it with us, you can. Or take it with me, you can, I should say, since Ryan's too much of a coward to do it. I have to read the questions. If we had a a third person, they could read it. I guess. I could go get one of my roommates, but no, that's too much work. Nah. Uh, Yeah, you can play with us. If I fail, I'm probably just going to edit this whole thing out. That's not going to happen. I'll make sure that. Okay. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right. Question one. Who helps Tony Stark escape from the cave in the first film? Jensen. What is his full name? Is there a, is, is this one of the multiple, well, obviously it's a multiple choice. You're correct. It is Jensen. It's Jensen. Um, his first name is Ho. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It's just H-O. It, it would be so, Ho. Ho Jensen. So, yeah, you're correct. All right. Two. What was Captain America's elite unit known as? Um. So this is back in World War II. Captain that, America, oh, the first yep. it was Avenger. The, the Howling Commandos. Correct. The Howling Commandos, which never really got brought up again. Well, they mentioned it in uh, Captain America the Winter Soldier. And and in Spider-Man, Peter Parker's... Uh, principal. Principal is the grandson of... Either the grandson or the great-grandson. It's played by the same actor. Yeah, played by the same actor. And there's a picture of it. Pretty mm-hmm. cool. But, you know. All right. What were Thor's last words to Loki? You really are the worst brother. Correct. Bravo. Not that that was a terribly difficult one. but Now, was that saying, you really are the worst brother, or you really are the worst, comma, brother? Like, he's addressing him as brother. So, I've seen this little argument, and it's I think it's different depending on what site you go to. I mean, it's not like it's it matters like, that much. It's just... It doesn't really matter that much. It barely changes the context of what he's saying. Yeah. I don't know. Take it as you will. I think it's the same meaning, more or less. All right. 
What planet does Hulk reach after the events of Avengers Age of Ultron, which is an underrated movie in my opinion? Age of Um Oh gosh. So uh. this would be in Age of Ultron after Hulk escapes yep. away with the Quinjet. What planet does he end up on? I can't believe I don't remember. What are the options? I can't remember this off the top of you my head. You want multiple choice? Yeah. Xandar, Asgard, Nowhere, or Sakar? Sakar. Yeah, the multiple choice gave it away. Yeah. Come on, Daniel. Come on. I'm, I'm sorry, Ryan. <laughs> now, this Which, one... It's, this is bad because be I actually just finished a rewatch of the Infinity Saga the other night. I know. So did I. Well, it was a couple weeks ago that me and my mom finished but oh yeah we did we, we made it through all the marvel movies other than the incredible hulk because it's not on disney plus and i don't have it on dvd oh because that's still 22 out of 23 it's a very yeah. high she keeps grade. pressuring me every time i go home like let's watch incredible hulk let's watch the hulk i want to watch them all i'm like well, she's not missing out on much i don't have it and you're not missing out on much it's a different actor it's a story that doesn't really ever come up again i mean you could try to pirate it no i mean no illegal. don't do that that's well, illegal come on you can't say that on air maybe um so anyways next question what is the name of black widow's father ivan correct which i think is only said once in the whole series mm-hmm. it's an end game when they're on uh yep. Vormir. when they're on uh yeah talking to red skull mm-hmm. all right in which movie did hawkeye first appear that would be thor correct when he had that really cheesy part where he reaches for the sniper rifle hesitates and then grabs yeah, yeah that's the compound bow apparently he wasn't even on set when they were shooting that movie they shot his scenes after the fact i i believe it because you never actually see thor and hawkeye mm-hmm. together in that movie they never actually interact yeah all right here's a softball for you which infinity stone was war machine assigned to retrieve in avengers endgame that was a power stone, wasn't it? Power stone, correct. Bonus question, who was he sent with? Nebula, right? Yep. All right, what is the name of Falcon's drone? Oh, gosh. This is in Civil War, right at the beginning when they're in... And he says, uh, he's cute, go ahead, pet him. Yep, what country are they in? Uh, I want to uh, say South Africa? They're in an African nation. Let's see, but is it Red Wing? Sure one. It is Red Wing. Now, in the comics, Red Wing was an actual bird. Yeah, but it's it would be kind of that, hard to explain that, that Falcon in the could talk to telepathically. Yeah, that would be so hard to explain in because because that is a power but, that Falcon so desperately needs. If they were to somehow introduce that in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I that would, would be, be awesome. I I would be floored. I like would love if, that. If if falcon is just like chilling at avengers the new avengers facility if they remake one or his apartment or his penthouse or something and he just has a pet falcon that'd be awesome i would i would like to see it which of these words is not in bucky's hydra programming obviously i have to read the multiple choice otherwise you could just guess i could you could potato right, so the options are well i believe you would be correct with that guess <laughs> the options are homecoming 17, Jailbreak, and 9. Jailbreak. Correct. Jailbreak is not in his code. Dude, my... Programming, whatever it is. My heart rate's getting up. I'm getting nervous to get one wrong. I'm, I'm not <laughs> a good nervous? streak right now. A you're, on a good, you're on a good streak. You have How many questions are we at now? Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This is question 10. I believe. Okay. So let's see if you can go 10 for 10. And I believe we're about halfway through. How old was Pietro when his parents died? I want this is s- a line in Age of Ultron when he's talking to... Is it Ultron? He's talking? Explaining how his parents died in Wanda? I want to say 16. Ah, <laughs> oh, damn it. Nope. You want to take a second guess or do you want the multiple choice? Is it 14? nope okay what was it there is eight 13 12 or 10 one final guess i'm gonna guess 13 wrong Dang it. 10 All years right. old the quote is we were 10 years old having dinner the four of us all right well 
I'm still doing pretty well, I think. Yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I know, 10. I'll be honest, I don't think I would have got that one right. That's a throwaway line that I wouldn't have remembered. Unless, I guess, if I rewatch the Infinity Saga with subtitles on... Then you might notice it. Maybe then I would recall that information. And, arguably speaking, I know that you and I both really like it, but arguably speaking, Avengers Age of Ultron is the most forgettable Avengers movie. Yeah, I think it's an underrated movie, but I'm not going to make the argument that it's the best of the four Avengers. It's probably the weakest of the four. But I still think it's an underrated movie in regards to the whole MCU. But that's a different that's a different conversation for a different time. All right. Where was Wanda when the Black Order attacked her in Avengers Infinity War? Now, is this the beginning or the end of the movie? This is the beginning of the movie when she and Vision are both attacked. What are the options for this one? Belfast, Dublin, Glasgow. Glasgow. Wrong. You should have let me finish. It's Edinburgh. Oh, yeah. If I would have let you say that last one. Because fun fact. For some reason, I thought there was a G in there. When I studied abroad in Scotland, I went to where they filmed these scenes. Oh, really? Yep. So um, that little um, corner shack where they watched the TV where they were meeting and then where Vision got stabbed, I've been there. Um, I've seen like the church that they fight on the roof of. Um, and then when Captain America, Falcon and Black Widow show up, um, that was in Waverly Station, which is the main train station in Edinburgh. Very nice. So I've been there plenty of times. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, you should have let me finish. You would have got that. Yeah. Oh, well. All right. Following up with a softball, which infinity stone was placed in Vision's head? That was the Mind Stone. Mind stone, correct. Which still irks me that in Loki's staff it was a blue crystal and then it comes out yellow. What bothers me the most is that it's a small stone when it's in its head, but when mm-hmm. Thanos puts it in the gauntlet, it's massive. Yeah, it changes shape so many times. Like in in um Vision's head, or I think even when Loki's scepter breaks apart, it looks like a very geometric shape. The same shape that it is in Vision's head, I believe. And then when Thanos breaks it off, it just looks like a giant hunk of crystal or whatever. Maybe he used the reality stone to reshape it. <laughs> and then he puts it in the gauntlet, and all of a sudden it's circular. It's that. It's just it one like, of those stupid little things. It changes shape too many times for me to be okay with it. So, what subject does Scott Lang have a master's degree in? Electrical engineering. Correct. All right. Where does Black Panther build the first Wakandan International Outreach Center? What is the city? Oh, this was in the... Black Panther right at the end. Yeah, I actually skipped the post credit scenes for that movie because it was getting late and I really wanted to watch Infinity War. Tisk, tisk, What are the options? San Francisco, Berkeley, Oakland, or Queens? I have no idea. I'm going to guess Oakland. Correct. Really? Was it a, a was it a close surprise. one or was they they were all pretty equal or I would I, hope you didn't guess Queens. No, I, I knew it was one of the middle two. Berkeley or or Oakland? Yeah, but I was I I knew I was leaning towards Oakland obviously since I said it, but yep, Oakland. All right. All right. How many suits has Spider-Man had in the MCU so far? Bonus points if you can name all, all, all of them. Oh, that's easy. Homemade, the Stark suit, uh, Iron Spider, Advanced, and then the Stealth suit, so five. Well, you did get the number right, but... It's not the Stealth suit, it's Night Monkey. Wrong order, too. Well, who cares about the goes, order? Homemade suit. Stark suit, well, Iron Spider. In chronological order, it's homemade, then Stark suit then Iron Spider, then Stealth Suit, and then the Far From Home Suit. The Stealth Suit, Night Monkey Suit, the Shield Suit, whatever you want to call it. I mean, who cares if it's a little bit out of order? I still got it. You got the question right. It was all five. All right. For how many hours was Doctor Strange waiting outside Kamataj to be called? Yeah, you're going to have to give me the options for this one. The options are two hours, three hours, five hours, or six hours. I'm going to say six. Incorrect. Five, Five hours. Oh, well. 
Okay. Again, I think that's a throwaway line from that movie. It's, he, that. She just says, is it uh, the ancient one or Mordo that says he's been out there for five hours? I'm not I'm not even sure. I think it's Mordo, but... Because, again, uh, Doctor Strange is arguably one of the more forgettable Marvel movies. Yeah, I like it, but... I think it's decently made, well it's just directed, well acted. Special effects are cool. It is outrageous. It's outrageous that Doctor Strange wise, lost it's just best kind visual of effects. Small. Yeah. At the what did it lose to? Jungle Book, I think. Nah. I don't know. I think that's a toss up there. Because Jungle Book was pretty good. Yeah, but still, Doctor Strange was more creative. Doctor Strange had more. Yeah, it was definitely more creative and more risk taking with its special effects, whereas. Disney went pretty safe with the Jungle Book, I thought. I mean, right. Just talking animals, which they've done before. Hey, we've been recording for a while. Let's let's keep going with the questions. Last question, so. Oh, cool. Here we go. And it's from arguably the best of the movies. What branch of the U.S. military was Carol Danvers a part of before losing her memory? Air Force. Wrong. What? It is the Air, it is the Air Force. You are correct. I was going to say, she's a pilot. <laughs> So it says here you got 15 out of 17. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Do you have a calculator? What's the percentage on that? Uh, let me check. Let me check. 15 out of 17 is 88%. Although one of those I think I gave you multiple tries on. Yeah. But that's all right. It's fine. I'm going to take the 88%. I'll take the, uh, what is that, a B plus, B B minus? Eh, it depends on where you are. We're just going to say I got a B. I'll give you a B plus. Which, all things considered, not right? bad. Because the two that I got wrong were uh, just throwaway lines, weren't they? Pietro and Wanda being 10? Wait, were... Th- um, and you got the... Um, the the Mordo... Edinburgh one wrong. But I have that marked as correct here because I knew what the answer was. Yeah, whatever, I'll take it. So I think you really got... 14 out of 17 whatever it's fine don't 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 look into it too much so really i think you got less than what you think that's gonna do it for us this week (laughs) i suppose i'll let it slide yeah we're 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 done recording uh i've been daniel i i had ryan here with me obviously you know the standard lineup Uh, i'd like to say thank you to bug hunter and the group for the use of our theme song it's all right off the album torn between a couple it's a great band great music give them a listen if you haven't already because you know i've got a feeling that a lot of people that listen to the podcast haven't but they are absolutely worth listening to let's see uh if you feel like uh emailing us about anything saying hey i love what you guys do which you probably won't do understandably or if you You want to talk about something specifically or if you'd like to request to be on the show even, uh, you can email us at stttpodcast at gmail.com. That's all I've got. Ryan. Check me out on YouTube. Gaming channel, Ryan LP. Vlog channel, Ryan and Tori. Some cool things are going to be coming out real soon, so stay tuned. Hit me up. Come on, let's do it. Let's go. Sweet. Whoa. Whoa. All right, we're, we're not doing that because I don't want to. <laughs> Um, All right, fine. Is that everything? I believe so. All right. Well, hey, thanks for listening, making it this far through, and uh, we'll see you on Tuesday. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.